right, guys, I thought I'd show you this, uh, share this with you. Uh, a friend of mine by the name of George down in uh, California, his, uh, it's not son-in-law yet, his uh, daughter's boyfriend, um, bought a 3D printer. And I don't, offhand, I don't remember the name or anything like that, but uh, uh, anyway, I sent him a CAD file of the bearing adapter, okay, for my uh, disc brake kits. Um, this is a scrap one left over. It's, it's, it's just for show and tell, basically. Uh, so anyway, this is the support structure underneath here, okay? It, uh, you know, you're, you're expecting that curve there, and there it is. Just got to break away a little of this, uh, it's a, it's a structure that's printed, because it was printed flat like this, so it has, in order to support that curve, you know, to build that up, they have to lay down a uh, support structure. And that's what this is. So it's just a very, uh, well, let's see here. Get it to... You never know for sure if it's focused accurately until you actually get to go back and watch the video. So I peeled most of it off, but you can see... Uh, you can get an idea how it was built up there. And I don't know what the specs are, the anything like that on the the uh, printer. But yeah, that curve looks beautiful in there. You know, it's just a matter of taking off some of that. So let's see here. Let's take some 80 grit real quick. Let's uh, let's try a razor knife. Oh yeah, nice. I don't really want to. Uh, and this should be PLA. I don't think uh, they've really done anything with uh, ABS yet. So. Uh, So it looks like maybe the 80 grit for the initial knock down the big hairy stuff. And then that part there comes off with the razor knife quite nicely. Sandpaper I'm sure would get it too, but... So, part of, the, part of the thing is George and I are discussing whether or not this is going to be accurate enough for um, prototyping and stuff like that. So, possibly, possibly not, but what I'm looking at is for display models and stuff like that, instead of having to carry around a three-pound spindle, I could have the printer, uh, have the spindle printed... 3D and plastic, basically, and be able to size everything, sand everything, shape everything, get everything to fit, and be able to uh, have a, a demonstration of the pieces and stuff like that without uh, the uh, the weight. And and it's actually a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be. So I could just about put it in the lathe and uh, spin it. For what we're doing now, I think that's certainly close enough. It could be, you know, cleaned up, prettied up more. Now, there's a little black here, and I'm guessing this is uh, what was left over in the extrusion nozzle. Uh, it seems like it came out way late. Uh, but since it's all the way through, you can, you can actually see the black uh, inside there as well. Uh, with that being the case, it had to have come out of the nozzle you know, while it was printing the blue. It's not just something that got stuck on the outside kind of thing, so. Okay, now this one has a taper cut on the end. I'm pretty sure all of them do, metal ones and stuff like that. Um, it may not have been something that was able to come out on the printer. It may have just been too fine. Um, 
that's kind of what we're looking at is what the capabilities are. Anyway, I bring up George. George is the one that sent it to me. George just bought himself a printer. So we may be seeing more uh, 3D plastic printed models. Okay, so let's get down to the comparison here and stuff like that. The way this works is this bearing adapter fits over the stock uh, Datsun truck spindle. Okay, this one's off a little bit. I'm not going to try to shove it down there. Anyway, then the, the hard body bearing fits on there. Okay. So this, uh, I measured it, and, and the, the thickness here is within, it is like one thousandths too thick or under. I think it's too thick. That's that's extremely close. Uh, the rest of the dimensions, I mean, if you could get plus or minus 10,000, I think that would be uh, uh, pretty cool with uh, a plastic part like that. You know, so in prototyping for this, I would want to see, you know, the height and the fit, and I'd want to be able to put it down on here and see, you know, put the hub on and everything and see how well it, uh, everything lined up without having to make a metal one. Uh, the metal one, when I was doing them by hand, it took about 45 minutes to cut them on the manual lathe. Not doing them by hand, but manually. Uh, they take about, to do both sides, it takes a good, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes uh, on the CNC lathe to do them. This piece took 45 minutes. Now, for me, somebody else printed it, so <laughs> it's uh, it was their time, not mine. So that's just, you know, awesome. But... Uh, uh, anyway, it fits here. It's it's a little looser than the metal one would be. Uh, I think it is about ten thousandths too small. And it's a hair. It's a little too tight here. So the then the thing is, is to see whether or not you know a little sanding or whatever will open it up enough. And like I said, push come to shove, I can put it in the lathe and uh, spin it. Now, even on the metal ones, I tend to have a bit of trouble with the transfer here sometimes being too tight, so. Ooh. Uh. Ooh. It's close. I can see it stretching. Can you see it flaring out there at the bottom? I don't want to break it. So, let's not, uh, let's not do that. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. That's, that's just really cool. So I'm looking forward to George uh, getting his figure, getting it in, getting it built, figuring it out. Uh, his is going to have like a 12 by 12 by 13 working envelope, printing envelope. Um, that's uh, that's freaking huge. So uh, especially for a sitting on your desk model. Let's see anything else. Oh, I never did measure the outside here for the seal. I wonder about that. All right, here's the seal. And it would actually go on this way. See, it, it made the bevel there, the chamfer. That came out beautiful. I hadn't even looked at that before. And let's see just how close we can get here. I think if I go wide angle. Yeah, there you go. You can see the resolution in the, bezel, in the uh, chamfer there. Gotta love the f close up on this camera, huh? Look at that, you see the shadow from the camera. I am literally, that is uh, half an inch from the lens, maybe. I think if we had a bit more light, it would focus right up in there. Okay. Enough playing around with that. Oh, look at that. That would test for the seal. That, that's basically uh, just a perfect two, so. That's just, that's just really cool. <laughs> Starting to make me want a 3D printer. And I still have a little ridge here, and that, uh, 
that's because when it starts putting it down on the on the heated pad and that stuff I think it just kind of mushroomed a little bit so nothing that can't be cleaned up uh, pretty easily but for for my testing purposes what I'd be interested in seeing and and stuff like that it works fine so I think I am gonna throw it on the lathe see whether or not I can uh, clean it up a bit and see what it does that's really friggin annoying <laughs> You're sitting here talking, going through the whole thing, and then you hear the camera automatically time out and shut itself off because you didn't hit the record button. Okay, so I already started. I hit it with the 80 grit. Uh, basically, it, it's on there. It still spins a little bit. I didn't want to open it up and, and break it. Uh, so we're partly seeing how tough it is, if it can handle this. Uh, we're also seeing just how nicely you know we can get it cleaned up, stuff like that. So I've already hit it with the 80 and got uh, a good bit... Of the, of the biggest roughness down and most of this little edge that was on the bottom here, that mushrooming. Uh, so now I'm going to hit a little with a little 120. And I think we're running somewhere around 1400 RPMs maybe. Yep. You can feel the sandpaper getting warm. I'm just doing it lightly. I don't want to, I just want to clean it up a bit. I don't really want to throw off the dimensions or anything too much. Yeah, some 240. Actually, some scotch right might work too. Yeah, I think I was kind of melting the, uh, I think I kind of melted that edge there. <laughs> yeah, you can see where I kind of melted the corner there a little bit and got it uh, dirtier. But the the mushrooming on the edge right there is gone. This part really looks nice. I don't. I don't think I'm really going to bother with it. What I want to do now is see if I can grab it from the outside and resize the inside enough to fit over that spindle. So, looks like that's going to be the one. Oh, yeah, it's not going to grab on that one, so let's just do it right here. Grab pretty tight on that. got a little warmth to it. All right, it's definitely closer. And the, the finer grit has more contact surface. Seems to heat it up uh, even faster. Nice and... I could, oh, I could open it up a little bit more, you know, but since it's plastic, you know, it's not grabbing that tight that I can't pull it back off. So, that's beautiful. I'm sure it's stretching just a little bit, but... Uh... Look at that. Man, that's a win no matter how you look at it. That fits on there perfect. That fits on there perfect. I don't have any hubs or anything like that on. I, I have no intentions of checking it any further because I know from the measurements and that stuff, it'll uh, be just fine. So, now that, this one this one's hard to compare to. That's got a really nice fit because it's been damaged and I filed it and stuff like that. But that's, that's close to the fit that I want there. This one's definitely looser, but if you're doing a proof of concept, you know, the plastic one, a little bit extra time, but way cheaper, you know, than having to turn these out and spend all the time and uh, cutters and all that kind of stuff. So, anywho, George, awesome. This thing's cool. I'm looking forward to uh, doing some other parts with you in the future.
especially that one we've been uh, talking about. <laughs> <laughs>